Hi everyone, my name is Drew, and today I'm coming to you with a review of a Blue Buffalo Bible. This is the NIV Thinline Reference Bible, large print edition in blue genuine buffalo leather. I picked this up recently at the Half Price Bookstore close to me. It was a fantastic price and I couldn't pass it up. And I just wanted to tell you my thoughts about this Bible. So first a quick look at the exterior. You'll see this uh, it's kind of a, a medium blue colored buffalo leather. It isn't a top grain leather. It does have a stamped grain to it. I don't know how you can see that. But the color of it is just beautiful. It's really kind of muted, a pretty matte finish. It does have this uh, border stitching, also in a blue thread. On the spine, you'll see five raised hubs, as well as Holy Bible, NIV, and then Zondervan. And the back is plain. It does have a little bit of a glue mark here and then up at the top, but nothing too big of a deal. Head and tail bands are both a navy blue, which matches this navy blue ribbon that pairs with this gold one right here. The gilting is a uh, blue under gold. You can see the blue there. And that gives it kind of a, a slate color almost when the Bible's closed, because you're seeing that darkness of the blue under the brightness of the gold. Very interesting. Your liner is synthetic. Uh, you'll get a gold gilt line going all the way around. And uh, it does a buffalo leather cover stamped right there. And this is an edge line construction, which considering the price you can get this Bible for, you can usually find it for around 60 bucks. This is really a seal. You're getting this really nice buffalo leather cover, and it's an edge line edition, so this is going to last you a long, long time. That's really one of the best upsides of this Bible. If you're interested in the corners, I'd say not the best corner work, um, but it's adequate, right? So all in all, the Bible holds together quite well. The size of it, it's six and a half by nine and a half on the cover, and it's just a tiny bit over an inch thick, including the, the cover here. And so you, you could call it a thin line, but it is pushing the limits of what a thin line is. And it is a pretty large, fairly floppy Bible. Let's take a look at the inside. Here we are in Proverbs chapter 14, and you can see one of just the absolute best features of this Bible is the 11 point dark comfort print font that makes this so pleasant and so easy to read. Uh, this is just a Bible that you're going to want to sit down with and spend time with. The font is so large, it stands out so well, you could easily preach from this. It's great for study, and at the same time, it doesn't end up being a huge addition despite the large print. It's still considered a thin line. That's excellent. It is a paragraph setting, not verse by verse obviously in two columns with center column references. And as is fairly normal, these references in the top are gonna to correspond to the left column, whereas these in the bottom correspond to the right column. References are marked with uh, standard uh, letters at the end of a word. So here you can see the letter X following stripped right there. And footnotes are marked with an italicized letter. That can be a bit confusing. Sometimes you'll get confused about whether that's an italicized letter or uh, uh, marking a footnote or then a regular letter that marks a reference. Sometimes I have trouble with that. That's a small issue. This is a red letter edition, so we can flip to a gospel. Let's see what we can find. Here's Luke. Let's turn the page, maybe. Red letters are not my favorite, but this is not a bad red letter printing. It's probably medium dark and seems to be fairly consistent, although you'll notice some inconsistencies. I don't mind it, I still find it pretty readable, uh, and, I, and I've been working with it. The paper, it feels very smooth. Of course, it's gonna be pretty thin, trying to keep a large print reference Bible within the thin line dimensions, so it, it can be a little bit tricky to turn just one page, and you definitely feel that it's a thin Bible paper. And in addition, if we flip to somewhere where we have a poetic setting here in the Psalms, you will notice a good bit of show through. Sometimes you're even seeing through to the page behind this one. And you'll also get some show through in the uh, the reference section too. I don't think it makes it unreadable though. It also, it isn't line matched, so you're not gonna sort of counteract it that way. Um, but fortunately, the, the print is just so dark that it, it seems to be not too much of an issue. I don't have any trouble reading from this in terms of getting fused, confused because of the show through. Um, in terms of what's in the front and back, just a quick look. We have maps in the back, which are on some glossy cardstock. Also a concordance in two columns, pretty nice. In the front, we have just your typical materials. Presentation page on some cardstock. 
title page, copyright, table of contents, alphabetical order books of the Bible, preface to the NIV, and then after that we're going to be right into the Old Testament here in Genesis 1. Each book starts just like this, a new page, title at the top of the page, and it's a pretty standard NIV setting. You're probably used to what this looks like. One thing you will want to note, this does have overcast stitching on this first signature to help uh, increase the stability of the Bible, and that's going to affect how well this Bible stays open in the first few chapters of Genesis. But as you can see, it's not too much of an issue. I've only had this Bible for a little bit, haven't used it a ton, and it stays open quite well even in these very early pages. So a few uh, pros and cons of this Bible. Uh, definitely one of the biggest pros, I think, is that it's just so readable. The dark, big font, it's very preachable if you wanted to do that with it. Uh, it's something you're going to want to enjoy spending time with, sitting down with, uh, maybe marking up or highlighting or underlining. Uh, but it's just a joy to read through because the font and the size is so nice. Another really big upside is that this buffalo leather is just so floppy and smooth and nice, even though it's considered a genuine leather. Um, it, it just has the exact floppiness you need to have this Bible stay open uh, and have an edge line construction uh, for really a, just a low, low price. Uh, it is just a synthetic liner. It's not you know any leather on the inside, but it still is going to hold up much better than something like a True Tone. A couple things that I would change. Sometimes the references, like I mentioned, can be a little bit confusing with the footnotes. I think I like how the ESV does it better, where your footnotes have a number at the end of the word, whereas your references are a letter at the end of the word. And the reason there is that verse numbers always come at the beginning of a word, so it's easy to tell them apart from footnote numbers that come at the end of a word. Uh, whereas where you're using just italicized versus not italicized letters, it can get pretty confusing as to whether I'm looking for a footnote or a reference. Another thing is when you do have quotations of one of the Old Testament and the New especially, let's see if I can just find one really quick. There's lots of them, but they'll be both footnoted and set in a cross-reference. So there's some redundancy there. Not the biggest deal, uh, but something that maybe could have been streamlined a little bit. Overall, I would highly recommend this edition of the NIV. Um, uh, it's very cheap. It's durable, it's beautiful, it invites you to spend time with God's Word. And if you're someone who's wanting to use the NIV for a long time, if your church is using it, and you don't mind the NIV 2011 text, then I would highly recommend picking this one up for a great price and a Bible that will last you a long time and get lots of views. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.